Okay, right, well, in today's video we're going to be doing some work on this. It's a Ferguson TX model television. Loads of these things exist all around. They're made in the, what, mid-1980s? They're a fairly common set. I've got one of my own sitting over there. Really good sets and they seem to work quite reliably. They never seem to, well, actually give up, to be honest. Um, this one is a Ferguson TX Movie Star. Uh, this one has <clears throat> a push button tuner with it's a very very cap i think so you've got your presets on the back um now some of these models uh had um a remote i think you'd with my version um you can actually attach a uh an rgb input into it it's all very exciting but this one, it's come in for a service, needs some general maintenance done to it. Let's check it out and see what's wrong with it. So other than the case maybe being a bit yellowed, if we go on to, uh, what is it, channel three here, we can check out. <coughs> Wait for the uh, HT to come up. I mean, other than the color adjustment being a bit uh, dodgy, um, perhaps some of the other controls being quite dirty as well. Hmm. Picture doesn't look too bad. Oops. Let the brightness down, it might make things easier for the camera to pick up. Colour's not too bad. The, there is colour certainly there. Um, but the focus isn't so great it looks a bit soft and i don't know if you can re if you've noticed this uh, sort of bending pattern if we get the cross get some uh, cross hats and dots on there we can actually see well uh it's got a bit of an effect on it so we've got some pin cushion issues and yeah, that's easily sorted out i suppose um, perhaps move the picture over a little bit. Other than that, I suppose it's not. There's not much that needs to be done. Um, I've suggested general service, maybe a couple caps here and there, touching up the solder joints, um, clean all the controls. You know, give it a full once over. It would be a very nice set once it's working. Generally, actually, really good convergence on it. Nothing to um, complain about, certainly. Doesn't look too bad at all. Yeah, you know, it's pretty good. Go back to uh, the standard uh, picture that we use on here to determine our sets. <clears throat> it's not so bad. It's probably worth saying that the HT preset is probably quite low. So it will need to be adjusted and I'm hoping a lot of that definition that we have lost in the picture will come back um, after we've adjusted that. Otherwise it seems to work quite well as a push button tuner. Um, yeah, so I think the first thing first thing we can do is take the back off and take it have a have an inspection of the inside. All right, so while well, I've uh, undone all of these screws here, let's take a look. Let's see how bad everything is. Well, it's a bit dusty, isn't it? There's our preset adjustments. Main smoothing cap. Let's put this back part of the case down. And let's take a look. What tube have we got in here? I've not heard of that type before. I'm not too sure what, who is the manufacturer? Fawn. Okay, Fawn made all right tubes. This is our mains transformer. 
heatsink, I'm guessing, assuming for our TDA chip. It's all there, doesn't look too bad. It's filthy. I've got a bit of a cold, so I'm not that well, if I'm honest. I'm not feeling 100% today, so bear with me if I sound like a sick puppy. These plugs are quite loose, that's not very... I wonder if that's for the degauss. You know, now I'm looking, I can't see a degas coil on this tube. Unless I'm being really stupid. But there has to be one. Can't not be a degauss on this CRT. How does it... Well, degauss. I know you could get tubes with a built-in degauss. Like a built-in band. Oh no, there is one. There is one, but I can't quite see where those um, wires connect to, unless it's, unless it's this. I've still got the mains powered on. Let's turn that off, just in case. <clears throat> now, usually there's a ferista. Goes to the power switch. It might be one of these. So we're gonna, it's probably, I think this is for our degas here. Degauss. So I'm going to see now if I've rectified that fault just by pushing that connector down. Let's have a look. Well, the answer is no. Um, and it still doesn't seem to work, so we're going to be a bit more involved. It's probably going to be a cold solder joint. You know, someone made a post on that CRT group, that collective page, yesterday, saying something along the lines of, oh, well, I bought this uh, monitor, and I've just got it home, and it now doesn't work. It has vertical collapse. And he was asking what the fault could be, and I commented, because so, everyone was just repeating the same thing, you know, all these internet experts who seem to know absolutely everything, unless it's something that's, you know, actually quite useful, just general bits of information that seem to be repeated again and again on the internet. It's all the same free bits of advice, <laughs> you know. Um, and I said something along the lines of, uh, it's probably going to be a cold solder joint touch up all the solder joints on the on the main pcb sorted anyway someone started arguing with me trying to tell me that there's no point touching up all the cold solder joints on on the pcb and it made me think really does no one else touch up all of the solder joints on 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 a pcb really so you would never inspect a board and if you found, I don't know, let's say five really sad looking cold solder joints, you wouldn't just touch up everything. You'd only do half of the board or maybe what a quarter and then just leave it as that. Really? How about if you can't see a cold solder joint? Because sometimes you can't. I don't know. Some people are very strange and they don't like, I don't know, doing stuff. You know, they... They'd rather just change caps. Anything that's practical, they'd rather just leave alone. Anyway, it doesn't matter. So, I don't know, shall we adjust the uh, the pin amp? Yeah. Um, let me see if I can adjust the H2 rail first. I think that's the most important one. Let me uh, try and figure out where these test points are. I do have... A service sheet for this somewhere if not i probably have well um, a physical copy i mean if not i probably have one saved on the pc um but i mean these are so easy to figure out they'll take no time at all i'm not going to bother cleaning anything just yet um but i would like to see if i can um just at least square out some ht issues make make the focus a bit more nicer 
um, and get the pin amp sorted. Uh, but yeah, one second, let's uh, let's give this a go. Well, I blew the mains fuse, so uh, gonna need to change that now. Right, so I've cleaned the case up, as you can see, it's pretty nice. Turn those lights on, see a bit more better. Yeah, you know, looks pretty good. Actually, it's far less yellowy looking than it, uh, well, once did look. Um, I've deep cleaned all the PCBs inside and I'll show you the chassis in a minute. My only concern is there's this very strange bubbly pattern. I don't know if you can make that out. It's just weirdly appeared. I don't know if that's a chemical reaction. Now, the guy said he was going to get this case painted, so that wouldn't make any difference. It's not textured or anything. I think it might just be some residue from something. But, you know, the tube face is nice and clean. Let's show you the chassis. Yeah, well, this is the chassis. As you can see, it looks pretty much brand new now. Um, I've deep cleaned everything. Here's the aerial socket. Um, I'm just going to check the main HT smoothing cap just to make sure it's all right because I did give that a bit of a deep clean and um, I think there was a rubber gasket covering this hole and I, I don't know if I, I don't know if it's sealed off inside or what or if that's just a vent hole but water was there so. I didn't know whether or not I was going to change that. I have to check that again to make sure it's all right. Otherwise, I won't bother. Um, so, in cleaning, we found that uh, we can actually see where some of these, what these controls do. So, we obviously got our pin correction. Um, I assume this is our TDA frame chip. Field linearity, that's frame really, isn't it? Line, it's just our line driver. Yeah, it looks nice and clean. Um, and I think this is actually an isolating transformer. Mains isolating transformer, probably what? <coughs> capable of an amp or something. Anyway, so what I'm gonna do is test out, make sure this smoothing cap is okay. Um, and if it's all right, I think I was talking about some of these caps being a bit tired. Um, so I'll see what I have in terms of replacements and stick those in as well. Certainly if we were having pin amp issues, we'd be wanting to change this one here. Um, not gonna go ham on this. Certainly if there's a problem, let's get this one out of there as well. Cool. I've just tested the smoothing cap, the main smoothing cap. It's only a two section. Um, it's all right. So I'm going to leave that in there. I know if I take it out, it's going to cause a lot of damage. Um, as these things tend to generally do. Um, so I'll keep it in there. Um, and I'm going to touch up these solder joints now. I'm just waiting for the old uh, soldering iron to warm up. Let's take a look at some of them. I've just put some flux on this. There's quite a few dodgy looking joints actually, so it'd be interesting to go through them all and touch up. And of course, we're going to change a handful of caps anyway. So I've also cleaned the uh, controls, just sprayed some WD-40 in there. You know, the standard stuff. Well, here we are. That's the best I'm, I can get the pin cushion. Um, I think it's something, the control is a bit touchy. I've cleaned it. And actually, to be quite honest with you, it looks, it looks pretty good. It looks pretty good. It's pretty squared up. And if we get color bars on there, I've done my magic with the CRT 
and it looks unbelievably bright now. It looks unbelievably bright. Loads of contrast there. You can oversaturate the picture with contrast. The AGC in this on this set is really good. So I'm quite proud of that. It looks quite washed out on the picture, but I promise it's not. Um, I'm just going to square this back together. I've got a speaker to put back in here because I removed it. Um, otherwise, yes, it's time to put the thing back together. Just before I do that, I thought I'd show you just the parts that I've changed. As you can see, a couple caps there. The main HT smoothing was all right, so I left it in there. I've just got the loudspeaker to connect back up. I've actually removed it. I removed it when I washed, washed the case. But considering that, well, it looks pretty nice now. Um, I'm just going to button this up. Um, I've done the pre HT preset already. I might do it again, um, but or just check it, I guess. But um, everything appears to be running quite cool. I pissed about the convergence, um, and it seems dead on. So yeah, pretty happy with it. Here's a little repair or bodge I had to do. The whip control pot broke. Uh, and I think it was a 4.7k or something. Anyway, I don't have a PCB mounted one of anywhere near that value. So I put just this one on some flying leads and I'll secure that down when the time comes. Otherwise, pretty good picture.